are delaying the start of our scheduled program to bring you the latest direct report on the atomic bomb attack on Japan. The explosion was a big ball of fire. Anyone not having dark glasses would have received a visual shock several miles away. One of the crew members said, my God, when he saw what had happened. What had been Hiroshima was a white mountain of smoke, and when we saw it first, it was already up to 25,000 feet. This one bomb is the equivalent of a 2,000 B-29 raid. For about 30 years, we've been standing here at the Avon traffic circle trying to get people to think about the problem of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's not just something that happened half a century ago, but it's something we need to think about. We have that capacity to be killing people. We haven't experienced it personally, but we have the capacity of killing whole civilizations of people, and we are thinking about it. And it's something we do every year to get people to say, this isn't just something they worried about in the past and we saw, but we're not very far along toward eliminating these kinds of weapons. About 1980, um, we had some people coming from Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They called themselves Hibaksha, which means the, the survivors. These are people who had survived, but maybe just barely, the bombing in either Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And to see these frail elderly people talking about what it was like to look around at this wasteland and see that their friends and their families were gone, and there was massive destruction there. And it sort of made us think even more. We were among the founders of Genesee Valley Seeds for Peace in 1972, and made us think even more about how deeply we needed to protest this and make people aware of the issue, rather than just turning on the TV again and thinking, oh well, that's somebody else's problem. But the whole time that I was growing up, I can remember um, feeling complete disbelief that, that it happened and that we haven't decided to stop the production or to completely, you know, um, withdraw that power from our, you know, yeah. tools on earth or our uh, war chest. Um, and I'm very, I'm really, I'm, I'm very upset that Obama has peace prize and he has nuclear weapons everywhere and has not signed treaties to ban uranium. I mean, I'm, I'm completely confused about how, how uh, he's held up as a peacemaker right now because these weapons are, are the worst known, you know. <laughs> we, we always commemorate Hiroshima and Nagasaki and that's not a happy thing to remember. 1945 and here we are in 2010 same problems more nuclear weapons than ever etc etc but as Hank pointed out this year as you put sort of a new twist a new thrust onto what we're doing at least people are talking now about nuclear disarmament which they haven't been for a long long time right now it's words and words are cheap but we can maybe turn words into actions certainly we can't give up the fight now the tide may be starting to turn. Well, it is such a, a solemn uh, time, really, the, the uh, anniversary of these terrible bombs, and it, it's a, a reminder of us uh, to us to uh, go forward in a different way. So I'm so pleased to be here with these folks. They're an inspiration to me. Let us build peace together. Let us build peace together. Let us build peace together here and now. Let us build peace together. Let us build peace together. Let us build peace together here and now. I really want to draw attention to the fact that nuclear war is still happening right now. The recent health study in Fallujah 
basically reported that we're using weapons that are unconventional, very likely depleted uranium and other sorts of <clears throat> chemical and radioactive weapons because the health effects that people are experiencing are worse than those documented after uh, the bomb in Hiroshima and um, that isn't clear to people. It's, it's uh, not commonly acknowledged that we're using these weapons. Um, we haven't signed on to a ban that many countries already have. There's a huge international campaign to ban uranium weapons um, and the United States is most notably the com country that uh, uses, supports the, the mining and production of the weapons and just won't sign on to the ban. So I'm um, really upset about that. I think that the mining process is too destructive to even consider uh, you know, reasonable for any any use. Well, I, you know, I grew up in during the Cold War with the terror. You know, where we really did get under the desks at school with practice, and uh, uh, and this the fear every day the people had. And then when I was a little older and read the accounts of what really happened at Hiroshima, John Hershey and other accounts, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just. Uh, uh, something everyone needs to pay attention to, and uh, it's you know one of the really one of the great crimes of all time, and uh, something that could be repeated if if we don't speak up.